regarding my topic now is the development trends and the uh, sustainability of the aquaculture sector in kerala which is uh, very well discussed across the state due to our uh, see we have launched our uh, budget subhiksha programs uh, uh, after uh, the, the 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 covid uh, affected the state and uh, fisheries also um, have a great role in uh, ensuring the the food su sufficiency and uh, nutrition security uh, of the state and regarding our uh, and overall picture of the the kerala fisheries uh, we we were uh, once uh, first in uh, in marine fish production but now we are uh, our uh, place is third after gujarat and tamil nadu and, and th 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 this is very important because uh, we are, we are we are not able to increase our marine production anymore from our uh, coastal seas because uh, our uh, coastal uh, sea especially the shallow areas are uh, more uh, more and more used and uh, we have not made much efforts to tap our uh, rich deep sea resources so uh, the, the the marine fish production is almost stagnated or sometimes declining some of the important marine uh, fish that uh, Keralaites release, like sardine mackerel, are dwindling over the last many years. And our taste preference, everybody know, everybody know, is uh, more towards our uh, marine or brackish water uh, species. And sometimes some of the native uh, species are much released. Whereas one contradiction is that most of our cultured species. Uh, are non-native species, uh, the, which is uh, not uh, much liked by many of the people, especially living in uh, people, those who live, live in coastal areas. And uh, regarding our uh, inland fish production, including aquaculture, is just one fourth of the total production, uh, which is uh, uh, about eight to eight to uh, six to eight lakhs ton. And 85 percent of our population eat fish and per capita uh, fish consumption per year of Keralaites is very much more than the national average, which is four times the national average. Our national average is just above 9%, 9 kg per year, whereas our, our per capita consumption is uh, around 27 to 30 kg, which is on par with many of the uh, uh, developed countries. And one another contradiction is that though uh, this much fish is produced and uh, some percentage of fish is uh, uh, being exported, we are still in shortage of about 1.5 to 2 lakhs tons. And uh, most of these uh, fish are being brought from other states. And the issue related with uh, the, the uh, bringing fish from other states is also well discussed over media because the use of preservatives and some of the harmful chemicals uh, in, 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 uh, you, you, you used have much health impact. And so uh, under these, uh, these situations, <coughs> aquaculture become very relevant for Kerala because uh, there is a gap in production of uh, 1.5 to 2 lakhs ton. Aquaculture is the and uh, marine fish production being stagnant or sometimes declining. Uh, we have to uh, depend on the aquaculture uh, for uh, to meet our even uh, the domestic needs. Uh, the 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 situation worldwide, you can see that uh, there is a growing demand for uh, the the fish. Uh, there is one one twenty two percent increase in fish consumption in nineteen nineties. And the global aquaculture production increased five, more than 500% from 1990 till date. That is over the last three decades, global aquaculture production has increased to 500%. And this is, in, in fact, the fastest growing fish production uh, sector in, in many of the countries. And, and it provides food with a high nutritional content. Uh, and we know that uh, the, which is a very uh, nutritious uh, protein and having long chain omega-3 fatty acids, which is very much help to our uh, the, the, the organ systems like uh, the, the circulatory system, heart and the brain like that. And 
and it's also a fact that many of the fish consuming states uh, like uh, the the japan uh, where the 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 incidence of heart diseases are very less so fish being a healthy food is released by the most of the people in many of the states and many of the countries and uh, regarding uh, the the aquaculture the 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 reduction in waste when we compare with the other farming systems or other production sector the feed efficiency of fish and the shellfish is better than any other animal that uh, that i show in the next slide the efficiency of uh, fish farming then integrating aquaculture into environment without harmful effects the, it is we we the aquaculture uh, the induces less harm than any other uh, the uh, the agriculture or uh, animal husbandry production systems and we can better utilize our uh, the nation's natural resources that is aquatic resources for uh, fish production because uh, as we know the, the the wetlands that is shallow water areas are one of the most productive ecosystems in the world and especially our brackish water it having kerala having so much brackish water areas our uh, this potential is not that utilized optimally and this aquaculture also provide employment and income especially to the uh, poor so this slide shows uh, the 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 uh, how aquaculture production is uh, more resource efficient than other production systems like poultry piggery and cattle rearing the protein retention in in fish is 31% whereas in poultry it is just 21% and in piggery it is 18% and in uh, in cattle it is uh, 15% and energy retention is also uh, more when compared to the poultry and piggery and feed conversion ratio uh, is much higher than the other uh, uh, animal protein production systems and uh, sometimes we can see that it it comes to less than uh, one uh, one uh, uh, in farming systems like biofuel farming where uh, even 0.8 can be achieved in such aquaculture systems and these are some of the factors promoting uh, aquaculture uh, uh, development that is the first and foremost is the increasing demand for fish and fish products and then the availability of uh, water resources uh, we have uh, we have uh, the tremendous uh, potential because we have much water resources at our disposal for utilizing for aquaculture and uh, scope of employment and income uh, and and in this uh, this covid pandemic situations uh, more and more people and especially the our nras the, uh, when they return from the overseas many are depending on aquaculture for uh, their employment and income and we have farming technology being developed very fast there are various farming techniques available for various uh, farming conditions and the the limitations with uh, fish seed production is also overcome with uh, the new and new hatchery technology for various freshwater brackish water and marine species our uh, many of our research institutes like as mfri ciba cifa and many of the universities and institutes are developing the hatchery technology for various species of freshwater brackwater and marine species and many of the indigenous species so this this is uh, this was one of the hurdle in aquaculture development of aquaculture in previous decades that is availability of hatchery technology for many of the species which we uh, use for uh, which we, uh, we we relish more then easy availability of farming inputs is also very important now we we we, we can get uh, the whatever farming inputs uh, we wish we it is av well available in uh, in at our disposal then we have better marketing facilities for our producer so the marketing facility is very essential for uh, for 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 successful uh, uh, enterprises like aqua farming and another thing is that our government both the state government and the government of india are promoting aquaculture we 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 were having so many programs blue revolution programs fisheries infrastructure development programs and now we have one program the 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 pradhan mantri malsa sampada yojana like by government of india 
which is support aquaculture, which promote aquaculture. Government of India is promoting the, the, the promoting aquaculture. And the government of India, we have uh, uh, so many programs in the past and now also we have so many programs that we will discuss later. Then scope of aquaculture development in Kerala, as I said, we have very rich water resources in marine areas, in brackish water and in freshwater area. We have 1.5 lakh hectares of freshwater, including 42,000 hectares of reservoirs. And one important thing is that our reservoirs are not at all used for the, the reservoirs in the previous decades. Just ranching programs were introduced in many in few reservoirs where the, 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 the yield, yield was very low. But now the cage farming uh, that uh, we we have we have started cage farming in very few reservoirs last year and in previous years, uh, which is uh, giving very good results, and the production is also much more than what we expect. So reservoirs, as uh, as it was uh, uh, the embodied as the sleeping giants in aquaculture system, uh, uh, should be well utilized for aquaculture production, especially for Kerala having forty two thousand hectares of reservoirs, but there is one impediment in utilizing reservoirs, that is the, the ownership of reservoirs. The reservoirs, the ownership of reservoirs rest with uh, either with uh, the forest department or the irrigation department or electricity board. So sometimes there is no coordination. But uh, uh, last year, uh, the department had meetings with uh, irrigation department elect and electricity uh, power department and they have agreed to, to, to utilize reservoir for fish farming and cage farming. And we have the vast extent of uh, 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 the flooded paddy lands like Kutanad and cold wetlands where our traditional integrated uh, farming system were in existence, but which has to be brought back because it is a, a sort of uh, the integrated uh, uh, environment friendly integrated farming system where uh, very less uh, inputs uh, of uh, are required like feed we, we don't have much to feed because the system itself ecosystem itself provide much of the feed to the the, the farmed uh, fish and the, our brackish water systems we have 1.2 lakh hectares of brackish waters including 0.4 six lakh hectares of backwaters. And 50% of these uh, brackish waters are uh, potential aquaculture areas also. So the, the Kerlites, uh, uh, the second preference after marine fish is brackish water fishes. So brackish water areas offer tremendous scope for further development of aquaculture. When uh, new techniques like cage farming are coming up, we can have more areas uh, for utilizing brackish water aquaculture for brackish water fish. Some of the brackish water fish like uh, sea bass uh, are uh, very much relished in Kerala. So uh, brackish water aquaculture potential of Kerala have to be optimized in the coming years. And the flooded paddy fields in many districts. I have my experience in uh, Calicut district where there are uh, paddy polders, padas agarams, having 200 hectares, 300 hectares, and even 400 hectares padas agarams, which were not at all used for uh, aquaculture. Uh, just the paddy farming, uh, a, a single crop in a very small area. That means at least uh, the, the 10 to 20 percent of the area is being utilized for uh, paddy farming. And the, the whole areas are uh, kept idle. So such Paddy fields in Palaka districts, Koriko uh, districts, Vaina districts, and many other districts can be well utilized for integrated farming with the paddy. And we have much infrastructure support, uh, technical and financial support. Infrastructure, we have uh, the, the uh, uh, required hatcheries are being built up. We have marketing facilities. We have so many institutes. Uh, as I told earlier, like CMFRI being its headquarters at Cochin, uh, we have our Kufos uh, stationed at Cochin. We have the SIFT, which is, and NIFAT, which they, they are supporting for value addition and some other aspects. And uh, our technical <clears throat> force of the department is also now strong, having uh, in all districts, we have technical officers supporting various uh, our various aquaculture. Uh, promotion programs. 
and the financial support are also being given by government of india under various schemes and the government of kerala under uh, various uh, schemes uh, that i will detail later and these are some of the drivers of change in aquaculture in kerala as well as uh, uh, in other uh, other states the availability of fast growing species earlier uh, you, uh, as we know in kerala one of the limitation we were uh, much dependent on carps it was sometimes carp and rick in uh, 1970s and 18s 80s but now we have more species at our disposal for uh, the uh, for aquaculture then development of hatchery technology for seed production is being developed for many of the species many of the freshwater uh, brackwater marine species hatchery technology is being developed by our uh, uh, research institutes now we have uh, hatchery technology even hatchery technology for many of the indigenous uh, uh, fish varieties from freshwater brackwater and uh, marine areas that we will detail later then we have uh, suitable water sources for farming as i explained in the earlier slide then we have so many technological innovations and inputs uh, in farming then we have the very strong government report as i mentioned just now and strong marketing and processing support and uh, one uh, and regarding the change in trends in aquaculture in kerala i have just mentioned that uh, in earlier decades during 70s and 80s we were more concentrated on carps it was i i, I would like to say that it was that time it was carps and rick because uh, the the hatchery production of uh, seeds were perfected uh, uh, perfected uh, in late 1950s and uh, many of the hatcheries were established in in kerala and uh, elsewhere in, in the country so uh, carp seeds were were much available for aquaculture so uh, that time uh, the, the we have introduced uh, so many programs for awareness earlier we were uh, much of the public were not much aware or uh, reluctant to take uh, take up aquaculture uh, as a vocation and the, the introduction of uh, janakiya malsikrishi program in 1990s and uh, subsequent programs like malsa kerala malsa samruddhi and now the janakiya malsikrishi pro program uh, phase 2 uh made awareness on importance of aquaculture among the 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 the, the among keralaites especially the educated youth so uh, many uh, many people and its uh, scope for employment and income more and more people are coming up uh, to take up this aqua farming and more and more area are also being utilized for aquaculture in recent years uh, freshwater areas brackwater area and marine waters are we we are we have just started the sea cage farming also and with the support of niot and some other research institutes so more areas are being uh, utilized for uh, aquaculture in recent years and now we have we are slowly changing from our traditional farming we have age age old traditional farming practices uh, like uh, integrated farming of uh, the, as i told earlier in kol putanadi area we, we were having we are having integrated farming but we have age old inter, uh, integrated farming like pokali and kaipad which were in existence for more than 2000 years and now it is on decline since it is a it is a integrated organic farming system and we can uh, we can uh, achieve uh, production organic product organic production in these areas without much inputs and diversification of uh, species used i just mentioned earlier then diversification of farming system we will uh, little more elaborate in the later slides and our uh, the increasing government support are some of the changing trends in aquaculture I, and I, as i just mentioned the introduction of new candidate species in aquaculture in freshwater areas now we have earlier it was uh, mainly uh, the the indian major carps like uh, katla rohu uh, amrigal kalbas etc but now but now uh, some of the indigenous carps Uh, like uh, carnatic or barbados carnaticus or the pulchellus carp like uh, hypsilobarbus pulchellus and uh, the 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 labio decimary 
the French liquid car <coughs> are coming up. The seed production technology of uh, such uh, indigenous carbs are, are also uh, uh, developed uh, by CIFA and uh, COFOS and uh, more and more uh, such uh, uh, seeds are now available. And uh, regarding tilapia, it's a recent trend. Earlier, our uh, uh, Mozambique tilapia uh, were used for uh, ranching in reservoirs and also in pond farming. Now the improved varieties of the, the, the um, uh, nilotic, uh, Oreochromis niloticus, the Nile tilapia, has a made a revolution. Tilapia, often called as aquatic chicken, has made revolution in aquaculture in many of the countries, uh, apart from the African countries, many of the countries of the world. Now the improved varieties of uh, the, the Nile tilapia, Oreochromis niloticus, like a gift, genetically improved farmed tilapia, it is genetically improved, developed through the hybridization like that, not the genetically modified that we have to distinguish. It is genetically improved. This genetically improved farm tilapia, which grows up to half kg by six months, five to six months, even more. That means it grows more than carp sometimes in farming systems like a cage. It attains a half kg size by five months even. That is our experience in, in Banasura Sagar Reservoir and also in Parsi Reservoir of Kannur, Banasura in uh, Vayanad and Parsi Reservoir in Kannur district. So it uh, provides a tremendous potential for further uh, development of uh, uh, the, uh, the freshwater aquaculture in Kerala and gifts like now few more varieties like Chitralada are coming. Chitralada, uh, according to farmers, Chitralada is... Uh, better than gift in growth. It attains uh, 600 to even 700 grams by six months. So the advantage is that in cage farming systems in reservoirs, we can raise two crops. And our experience is that uh, our cage size is, uh, 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 the, is six into four into four. That is six meter length, six meter width, and six meter depth. In, <clears throat> such, a, in, a, in, in such a single unit, 125 to 150 tons of fish is pr produced. So it offers a tremendous potential. Tilapia offers a tremendous potential for farming systems like uh, cage farming, uh, then uh, the, the, the rear circulatory aquaculture systems and the biofloor farming, etc. Then we have this uh, uh, pungaceous catfish being farmed over the last uh, few years. So it can, uh, being an air breathing fish, it can be grown in, in, in high densities. And as you know, in Vietnam, uh, 10 lakhs tons of this fungus is produced in that country. And in Kerala also, many are taking up this fungus farm. But uh, the thing is that in most of the areas, this is not a much released fish. But value addition like filleting may help or the, 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 the export potential can also be tapped for uh, the species like tilapia and uh, pungaceous catfish. And another uh, important fish that is also coming up recently is the climbing perch anabas, which is also distributed. We have also this fish, <coughs> this fish in our natural water bodies. So we have, now we have some of the improved strains of anabas, like koi anabas, which grows to uh, 400 uh, up to 400 kgs by five six months. So it also affects. Uh, uh, it also uh, will be a, a better candidate species in coming years. Then we have our indigenous uh, maral species, and the seed production technology is now available, and the maral seeds are now coming up. And also in Kerala, also we have very few maral hatcheries, and uh, marals also offer a, a new candidate species for uh, uh, freshwater aquaculture. Then we have uh, the in native uh, uh, catfishes. We have our, uh, the Clarius decimary, our walking catfish, Clarius decimary we have. Our, we have our uh, stinging catfish, that is Ketronistus fossilis, and we have the uh, butter catfish, that is Ombok uh, uh, malabaricus. So uh, these, uh, the, the, these, in, uh, these indigenous varieties offer a, a tremendous scope in future development of uh, 
aquaculture scenario of kerala and uh, regarding the giant freshwater prawn we we are we were uh, growing this species for uh, for the last uh, two three decades uh, but uh, it's uh, it's integration with uh, paddy and other fish like carps has to be taken up in more areas especially in paddy polders like kutanad coal and other uh, the, the the flooded paddy fields in other districts also and regarding brackish and marine species <coughs> new and new species are being added every year for uh, milfish uh, hatcheries technology is very well available and uh, um, but uh, the thing is that most of the hatcheries are uh, located in uh, indonesia and uh, uh, philippines and our own institute uh, the siba has the has recently uh, being successful in uh, hatchery production of milkfish in coming years we can uh, produce uh, milkfish seeds and we uh, the, the the agency under the department adac has a tie up with siba uh, for a multi species finfish hatchery at odayam varkala in uh, tuandan district uh, which includes uh, the the milk milkfish production also then we have mullets it's also a much related uh, species in kerala we have the grey mullet mugil cephalus uh, which is also a fast growing species and in one of our farm at edakochi in ernakulam district this species is widely farmed and and is in much demand and we have the sea bass now and the sea bass uh, seed production technology is being developed by Siba and RGC Raju and the Center for Aquaculture under MBDA. Uh, these two institutes are uh, producing Siba seed, and uh, now the state government have also taken up uh, with this research institute for Siba seed production in Kerala. So Siba is also being a very tasty fish, and uh, Yuri Highland species. Uh, I, I remember an experience with uh, MBDA. in a demonstrative farming of sea bass in in wayna district in freshwater conditions in freshwater also it grows but the the growth rate is a little slow uh, less in freshwater than in brackish water so being a urihanan species the sudden changes in salinity uh, would not won't affect much the spe for species like sea bass or pearl spot or sometimes even red snapper so such a species has to be Uh, uh promoted more and regarding pearl sport uh, everybody know our own state fish is being getting uh momentum in in production over the last many years because it is a very attractive fish but even it is used in aquaria also so this uh, and and the pearl sport and our department department of fisheries is uh, setting up uh, hatcheries a uh, pearl sport hatcheries in many of the districts already we have the pearl sport hatchery at iron thing fish farm uh, two hatch uh, two units at uh, our uh, poya farm in trichur district and one at uh, the edakochi farm and more are also being planned in coming years so pearl sport also offer and another thing with the pearl sport is that we have we had a tie up with uh, the national bureau of fish genetic research and bfgr <coughs> for the for a brood bank project of pearl sport because the as we know the growth rate of pearl sport is very uh, low it attains uh, about uh, 200 to 250 grams by 10 months or one year so we this uh, this uh, brood bank project we hope uh, by uh, the in the coming years we would have better strains of fast of fast growing varieties of pearl sport with our disposal by 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 five tiny by 3 4 years then the regarding uh, red snapper root genus argentimaticula uh, argentimaculata the siba has developed the technology for uh, the the seed production of the red snapper and uh, regarding the uh, regarding some of the marine species like pombano cobi and groupers pombana we are even growing in brackish water also but uh, the salinity uh, the drop in salinity during monsoon poses a problem but it's a better candidate species uh, uh, in uh, brackish water and uh, marine waters and uh, cobia is also very fast growing species it uh, attains even 5 to 6 kg in one year and the trial experiments uh, the embeda shows that and the cobia are also being 
uh, is, uh, seats are also available now and groupers are also available now the group the the the, the, the uh, rgc have a grouper project <coughs> for production of grouper seeds and regarding the shellfish uh, shrimps vanami uh, actually the vanami being an exotic one initially our state didn't take up the vanami farming for various reasons but uh, meantime it made a revolution in uh, in 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 inland uh, aquaculture production in many of the states like uh, states like antra and uh, bengal and the most of the shim that is uh, now being imported uh, exported is also the vanami shim actually the vanami shim supports the 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 processing industries of kerala also as they though being brought from uh, andhra so vanami is uh, and the, 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 uh, being a cc it is more most more active at, at the midwater that is kolam whereas the other shim like our own monodon or uh, the, the the white shim being bottom feeding most of the time vanami offer uh, another scope in uh, the the bio block, bio flock farming so we have the, the uh, department has taken up the trial farming of vanami in bio flock systems this year so if it is successful in uh, or uh, the commercially viable i think the more and more people will be taking up vanami farming under controlled uh, closed systems like uh, bio flock farming in coming years then the mangrove crab earlier we were doing the crab fattening by collecting mangrove crablets from wild but now the wild collection of the fish seed or crab seed is not allowed under our the 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 kerala fish seed act now the rgc uh, siba and rgca were successful in the crab seed production technology and the crab seeds are now produced and it also offer a a uh, good scope for uh, the, the 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 employment and the revenue in coming years then mussel regarding mussel farming I, i think i don't need to elaborate because the success of mussel farming in kerala especially in kasaragod districts is well known to everyone within a short span of uh, time the technology from laboratory the cmfr has developed the the rock culture technology that has been taken up by the 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 local people including the women groups and that has made a tremendous uh, actually I, i would say the revolution in in muscle farming and now we know most of the even 80% of the farmed muscle is coming from kerala that is from the the the, the kawai backwaters of kasaragod district and the seed production of muscles and oysters are well available <coughs> and this year uh, department of fisheries has taken up this uh, particular project with the cmfri for uh, muscle and oyster seed production and in kannur we we have started the work of establishing a muscle and oyster hatchery and uh, at at the north kerala then regarding another uh, the, the 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 trend which that i have observed recently is the diversification of uh, our uh, aquaculture practices earlier we were mostly doing traditional extensive farming uh, to then slowly switch off to semi intensive farming in ponds and tanks like that and then now the, we have more intensive farming systems available at our disposal for more production from a from a particular unit area as i said the cage farming is getting popularized every year and more and more people are uh, uh, taking up cage farming in our freshwater breakwater areas and the department has the the cage farming program for the last 5 10 years and it is very successful and our reservoir cage farming which is uh, mostly done by our uh, scst societies associated with these reservoirs are turning to be a big success and i hope that uh, this uh, cage farming reservoirs would be coming up more in coming years uh, which would uh, help much the local uh, the the tribals in uh, earning an income and also supplying fresh fish to the, the such areas where marine fish uh, is not much available and regarding recirculatory aquaculture system 
you know we, the, the 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 kerala where the availability of uh, the the land is very less and the many people having many um, uh, small land holds are taking up uh, the 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 farming practices like recirculatory aquaculture system and aquaponics bioflow farming like that because uh, the small area is required for such aquaculture systems aquaponics <clears throat> are also equally taking uh, taken up by many of the, in many of the areas especially in uh, as you know in <clears throat> ernakulam district in cherai village it is uh, where this aquaponic is uh, being taken up many of the people it is actually an aquaponics village cherai in ernakulam district and uh, bioflow our uh, the experience of the department with uh, bioflow farming is very encouraging over the last two years and more and more units are being set up under uh, support of the the government of uh, kerala as well as the the programs of government of india like pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana i think next year more than 5000 units of bioflow uh, more than 5000 bioflow units of uh, 4 uh, meter dia uh, would be uh, established in in kerala and the, the the integrated farming from our traditional integrated farming to the new areas like imta integrated multitrophic aquaculture system i will just say an example in kasaragod districts <coughs> till two three years back we don't have much problems in in muscle farming but this intensification of muscle farming in a particular area because the cmfri has made a had made a warning in early early years that there is a carrying capacity for Uh, every uh, culture systems or every farming systems, but uh, when uh, it turns to be a big success, there was no control at all. More and more people were taking up uh, this muscle farming, and uh, were seeds were also not available, and which was mostly collected from the wild. So, so there were some social issues with our marine fishermen also. In many areas, they protested in uh, the in uh, uh, in collection of the muscle seeds from wild <clears throat> and here we need some sort of uh, integration or uh, the diversification of this farm this farming system where we can associate the cage farming of fish muscle farming and uh, even the 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 seaweed farming we can integrate so such a multitrophic in uh, integrated multitrophic aquatic uh, aquaculture system multitrophic aquaculture system Uh, uh would also be a, a, a good sign uh, for future development of our future better utilization of many of our aquatic areas and regarding another area that is also being taken up by the many many people uh, especially the small self help groups are ornamental fisheries and its potential is not at all utilized i would say in kerala because uh, we have so many exotic species uh, that are uh, permitted by government of india and government of kerala we have so many indigenous species the breeding technology of many of which were which are uh, perfected by uh, kufos and uh, many other institutes and recently the potential of uh, the marine ornamentals uh, our own cmfri has developed uh, breeding techniques for uh, the almost 16 species of marine ornamentals so it offers a tremendous potential for aquaculture development and for the income and employment generation of the our the coastal people especially our coastal people and even the women folk can take up this farming to a greater extent then regarding the when we acknowledge the potential of development of aquaculture in kerala we can also see that there are there are some issues with the sustainability of the aquaculture system and one thing is the habitat degradation and biodiversity loss as we know uh, when the shrimp farming were uh, being taken up uh, to a great extent in 1980s 90s 90s large extent of our coastal wetlands including mangrove areas were destroyed for taking up uh, shrimp farming not only in kerala in other states also situation was uh, uh, even worse and finally our uh, honorable supreme court has to intervene to check the the uncontrolled growth of coastal aquaculture especially the shrimp farming and even in in it has to 
give a directions to to blast the 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 farms uh, shim farms uh, that that, that were uh, <coughs> clustered around the koleru lake which is a very high biodiversity area so such issues are there with the expansion of aquaculture so we have to make a balance uh, between our uh, aquaculture development and our environmental sustainability then pollution is another issue when we go for intensive farming in ponds or other systems so when the <coughs> nutrient rich water or the sludge is uh, released to the uh, near, nearby aquatic ecosystem it may cause utro eutrophication and uh, associated pollution problems uh, to our natural water bodies then another issue is uh, the threat from exotic species and banned species some of the even we can say that some of the uh, banned species are also being farmed in even in kerala so such exotic species which is not permitted Uh, has to be totally banned and the strict legal action has to be uh, taken up and i have seen a paper some years back uh, that is our on this uh, this paku which has colonized i think it is uh, that that paper the research paper is of uh, our dr biju kumar and team they it has colonized our uh, the the bharatapura river so the, the such a threat is there uh, when such a, the farmed fish escapes from our uh, farming area it may uh, cross breed with cross breed with our uh, some of these for example we have the tilapia tilapia we have we, the mosambic tilapia is uh, already in existence in our water bodies but this genetically improved or uh, such a new strains which has to be raised in a very strict uh, controlled biosecure condition escapes from our culture systems as happened during the the flood in 2018 and 19 it, it it may cause some sort of dilution of the gene pool some of the even our uh, the some of the improved varieties like anabas like koi anabas it's an improved variety so if such varieties escapes to our natural water bodies it may cause some sort of uh, the, the there is a chance for uh, the cross breeding with our other species and may cause our the dilution of our gene pool and another thing is that uh, the the import of spurious seed uh, from other states even from other countries and we have our experience that uh, much of the 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 tilapia seed now the, the government of india issued a uh, guidelines for uh, farming of tilapia where only the improved varieties of tilapia under strict biosecure conditions are permitted but uh, the 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 in nedumbacheri airport uh, the, for the last many years we were seeing that the 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 fish seed that is uh, being brought from bangladesh to kolkata are flown to cochin for distribution to our own farmers it is not a the, where the quality is not at all assured and for ordinary our mosambic tilapia the price is very less whereas the gift tilapia is little costly and uh, some of the 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 traders are selling this uh, the the common tilapia as gift or chitralada seed and uh, the farmers were not getting the desired result while using such uh, these spurious seeds uh, brought from other states another issue with uh, the 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 intensification of farming system is the increased use of uh, plastic and chemicals in aquaculture for example in many of our uh, uh, innovative farming systems like uh, cage farming then uh, ris uh, recirculatory aquaculture system and bioflow farming we are using more and more plastics and the leaching of this plastic may be may pose a, a, a threat in coming years for example our cmfr has already some observations on this uh, formation of this microplastics even in uh, <coughs> the body of fish which may cause the health hazard to human beings also and chemicals regarding use of chemicals also we have so many restrictions and guidelines in in the guidelines for coastal aquaculture th there are list of chemicals which are which are which are not to be used there are chemicals the quantity the 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 
quantity of which has been specified. But uh, the, 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 the uncontrolled use of these plastic and chemicals may cause uh, some uh, the adverse uh, issues in coming years. And increased use of wild caught trash fish for fish feed production. For uh, fish feed, our fish, uh, the, the fish meal is a, uh, an important ingredient. And most of the fish meal is produced from the trash fish that is being caught from wild, that is from our coastal sea. So that also pose some issues in uh, maintaining our uh, the production or the biodiversity of the sea. But we have very good number of uh, the legislations or legal instruments uh, for uh, for ensuring the uh, the the, uh, the sustainability of aquaculture system, our aquaculture systems like Coastal Aquaculture Authority Act 2005, which uh, give very good guidelines for uh, the various farming practices like stream farming and other farming systems. And we have the uh, Kerala Conservation of Paddy and Wetland Act 2008, which is uh, which is uh, amended recently, where the, the conversion of our wetlands and the paddy lands are restricted. So when we go for integrated farming in paddy and other wetlands, we should make a balance because large scale conversion of such wetlands would not be permitted under uh, Act. So we have to go for integrated farming. So whereas in Andhra, you know, more many may in many areas large extent of paddy lands were dug out for uh, uh, creating ponds for aquaculture so such things would not happen in kerala as we have such conservation measures and we have the kerala inland fisheries and aquaculture act to control the the the, the adverse uh, the impact of aquaculture in kerala and the use of fisheries like that we have uh, enacted the kerala inland fisheries and aquaculture act we have the Kerala Marine Fishing Regulation in 1980, which was amended last year, where the capture of uh, the, the, the small size fish, there is a mesh size regulation for uh, capture of very small fish. These very small fish or trash fish are mostly used for uh, production of fish feed. So now almost 59 uh, species of uh, fish has been specified under this act for capture, the size has been specified for capture. Now we have the Kerala Fish Seed Act 2016, and a very important legislation by our government uh, to ensure the the quality fish, uh, quality fish seed, uh, to be made available to our fish farmers. And we have some of the provisions of Indian Wildlife Protection that has to be ad ad adhered. We cannot use the 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 uh, many of our uh, wild species for aquaculture. Also, some of the protected areas could not be used for uh, the aquaculture, especially for uh, especially for using exotic species. And we have the Biodiversity Act and our biodiversity rules, and we have the the uh, Wetland Conservation Management Rules 2017 promulgated by the Government of India. And we also we we our state and also our country have some international obligations like Ramsar Convention then code of conduct for responsible fisheries and the sustainable development goals of the un etc and to to achieve the sustainability in aquaculture system uh, we must have some measures uh, like the 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 adherence to our uh, existing legislations and also some of the other aspects like wise use of wetlands as envisaged under ramsar convention the wetlands, if uh, if we we are utilizing it for the for welfare of our local people, at the same time we have to ensure its uh, environmental sustainability as well as its uh, sometimes its social uh, sustainability also. So wise use of wetlands is a must. We have to conserve our wetlands for our uh, future generations for various uses, including aquaculture. Then um, this uh, water is a precious thing, and it will be much more precious in coming years when water availability will be low. Then the maximum recycling of water in aquaculture, especially in intensive farming systems like uh, RIS or aquaponics or bioflock uh, technology, etc., we should uh, we should strive for recycling of water in some of these intensive farming systems. Then the domestication of desired species, because in many cases, 
the desired species uh, when when it is uh, where hatchery technology is not perfected we rely on a wide wild stock even for uh, this mullets and uh, this milkfish uh, we are depending on wild stock in in this coast in tamil nadu is mainly uh, we are depending mainly depending on that area for collection of uh, uh, milkfish seed because uh, that much number of milkfish seed is not produced in india now we have our legislation kerala fish seed act which prevent the use of uh, the wild caught fish seed for aquaculture so this this is an important aspect we have to domesticate we have to uh, improve our uh, hatchery technology for our we have to uh, to bring more species for our for uh, see domestication for domestication then total ban on non permitted exotic species it should be banned totally no exotic species which are banned uh, should not be permitted in aquaculture and our aquaculture also has a responsibility that uh, they won't use such uh, ex- such banned exotic species then shift from exotic to nat- native species as i said earlier some of the carps like carnatic carp or kaveri carp then our own this pulchilus carp and the the the, the french lick carp likes that and the many of our yellow catfish and murals our our own catfish etc are we have tremendous scope for bringing more and more species uh, for aquaculture so it is the responsibility of the research institutes and universities like that uh uh to bring more and more species native species for aquaculture uh, to to so that we can have a shift from exotic varieties to to native varieties then better targeted species selection see we have some of the problems when undesired species are selected for aquaculture just i mentioned in the beginning that carp which is not a well well preferred a uh, food fish in coastal area if we get more uh, such if, uh, species in coastal area we don't have much market for them so target we have to target a uh, species which is which, which is widely accepted whereas carp is well accepted in hilly areas like wayanad idukki or uh, sometimes in patanamthitta or palakkad but it is not uh, widely released in other areas so the, the, the whereas in coastal area we have to, uh, lot of uh, backwaters and uh, sorry I, i i say brackish water where our brackish water species can be grown which will be well accepted by our coastal people <clears throat> like that the 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 site selection and the species selection is very important for uh, taking up uh, aquaculture and to ensure uh, its sustainability and seed production is also very important improved cost effective seed production technology is to be adopted now our department is uh, setting up uh, more and more multi species hatcheries uh, including finfish hatcheries uh, to cater to the demand of increasing number of uh, increasing number, uh, number of fish seed especially the native species then more microbial management for sustainable production is also important because we know when we go for intensive farming <coughs> fish diseases are coming up earlier uh, we 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 had a very bad experience with our uh, the viral diseases viral outbreak with our shimba aquaculture like white spot syndrome virus or the monodon bacula virus or some so many viruses viral diseases have affected our shimba industry and it was on a collapse in the later 1990s due to this viral diseases and the bacterial diseases are also coming up in for the the shellfish as well as uh, the fin fishes so micro management is very important and sometimes uh, in in our farming system traditionally we are uh, we were using some of the 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 microbial management and now we we we, we have uh, the ready with us the inputs like um, so many the 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 the, the friendly bacteria or other the other uh, other uh, you, uh, uh, microbes with us to ease uh, the farming practice to ease our farming then promote farming of fish that are low in food chain like milk fish is also very important when we go for uh, 
some of the the game fish like sea bass or some of the high value species the the protein content from uh, the uh, fish meal is more so more and more fish meal is to be used for uh, the uh, for production of fish feed for rearing some of the fish like sea bass or similar species but uh, to, to ensure the sustainability uh, see, we can uh, we should strive for promoting fish that are very low in food chains like uh, uh, milk fish or mullets then better site specific farming i have just mentioned and the prom promote integrated production system i have mentioned and then follow relevant rules and guidelines for example guideline for coastal aquaculture authority there are guidelines for vanami farming there are guidelines issued by government of india for uh, for responsible tilapia farming etc which has to be followed by all aquaculturists and restrict the use of chemicals and the plastics is a must in coming years then we should shift our incentives to reward sustainability that is uh, we are giving so much subsidy to our aqua farmers here in coming years sustainability issue sustainability should be a, a, an important criteria while giving or increasing such uh, incentives if uh, aquaculture is uh, is uh, going for uh, the organic farming or integrated farming or eco-friendly farming he should be uh, rewarded more 